The opening ceremony is the pinnacle of what fans look forward to every single League of Legends season. Getting to do this for players, it's really an honor and it's incredibly motivating to think back to when I first started playing and I watched the show and I was completely blown away. The thing that unifies all of us is this desire to deliver an absolutely unforgettable experience for players. The challenge is that we're always trying to figure out how to set the bar higher. Every year with the opening ceremony, there's a whole slew of challenges, but there's always one to two that we'll just remember forever. In 2017, the dragon wasn't landing on the stadium until the morning of the show. In 2018, everyone loved KDA, but we had our most public failure. We had this big idea for a portal, and that broke live on air. We lost power to the camera and completely ruined the transition into the next part of the show. It's just a reminder that we're in a live show and anything can go wrong. The 2019 opening ceremony was our most technically challenging show to date, but the path to success was often unclear and there were many hurdles along the way. The conversation every single year is, What's going to be the thing? What's the dragon? Is it two dragons? We wanted to flip the show on its head. We wanted to give players something completely unexpected. We wanted to bring our IP to life in ways that have never been accomplished before. We wanted to depart from what we'd done the previous year. We knew we had the possibility to do some really cool stuff. We didn't have the True Damage song. We didn't have the World's Anthem. We really were coming up with ideas without knowing how they were actually going to be integrated into the creative of the show. What if we made the trophy itself this sort of central character that reveals itself at the end. We had this idea of bringing our music videos to life on stage, but how we were actually going to accomplish that, we weren't quite sure yet. How do you bring an echo parallel convergence to life? How do you bring an Aurelia blade dance interacting with, with people, and how does that stay true to her character in the game? I remember, like, we started talking about magic. Holograms in particular was a type of tech that we had wanted to play with, but never really had the opportunity to do before. It was a way to do magic, but in our way with technology. When approaching the hologram technology, traditionally it's only viewed from a single point of from the audience. But for our show, it was going to be 360. We were pushing the limits of this technology. We'd seen demos, but we hadn't done it. We'd seen other people's content, we hadn't seen ours. The fundamental question that we weren't gonna be able to answer until we answered it was, will this work? These opening ceremonies are perfect opportunities to take musical experiences to new places and to excite players in like totally new ways. For us, it's just trying to really touch people and also express our, ourselves in different kind of creative ways. Awaken Giants and Phoenix were all very different genres of music and figuring out a way to seamlessly transition those was a challenge in itself. True Damage is really that next evolution for us of moving into continuing that narrative, tying the knot between previous years into this year and potentially showing more opportunity. It was really exciting to think about True Damage making their debut at Worlds. It was also terrifying because, as with any song, you're not always 100% sure if everyone's gonna vibe with it. We really wanted to think about what music would sound like in five or 10 years with a weird mix of languages and sounds and taking something that's fundamentally hip hop but infusing it with a lot of unique DNA. We had to keep all of this under wraps, what it sounded like, what the performance was like, and we had to sort of trust that players would follow us down this path into a genre that we hadn't explored yet. So when it comes to like working with certain artists, we really want to reach out to ones that like kind of get it, right? And are truly invested, understand what we're trying to accomplish. When they feel like they're inhabiting Senna, when they feel like they're bringing Echo to life, like that is the 
that is the sweet spot. And overall, just a cool partnership, a cool experience to do something together. And that's really what it's about for us. So when we had chosen the members of the band, this basically it became the time of excitement for us because the opening ceremonies team then had an understanding of what it was going to potentially look like on stage. It's just that's where all the creativity just starts to explode. We keep pushing the limits of what technology can do for us, but that is in service of where is our imagination taking us. Embracing holograms gave us the opportunity to have this action and reaction between our virtual performers and our human performers in a way that we knew was going to be very special. When we first started investigating how to do this show properly in the round and represent these champions on stage with real live performers, we realized that we needed some very specific technology in order to make that happen. With augmented reality, there's always this compromise of like, it's going to look great on broadcast, but is it really that compelling in a live setting? And this is going to be really special because we don't actually need that layer of technology through a camera to be able to experience it. There's actually going to be a whole bunch of HoloNet scrims, which you can see here. This set of services should be invisible to the naked eye, and it will be able to capture our projections on it. In order to make this feel most magical, we needed to hide as much of how it all came together from the audience as possible. To accomplish that, we had to find ultra short throw projectors, which are in a very limited amount in the entire world. The first question was, can we get enough to even do this? With holograms, if the holograms fail, you just have a performer on an empty stage and there's really nothing else to it. The show was so reliant on the technology. We knew that we needed to stress test it to its max. We got a small test piece that we were able to set up in the LCS studio here in LA. This is the very first time that we've actually put content intended for the actual show on the technology. Bring out the clothes and see what the clothes look like and what people look like back there with the stuff. Everyone was so excited to see what this product looked like because none of us had actually seen it in person before. We learned that lighting was one of the tricks to create the illusion. Something we learned was that if performers were wearing dark clothes or black clothes, they would just disappear, and certain materials were really distracting behind the holograms. One, two, three. One, two, three. In order to deliver a show that really worked, we had to get the best people in the world at every position. It's really incredible all the people who are like legends in their own fields coming together to tell the story of League of Legends and our characters through this hologram technology. <laughs> We set up a full-scale hologram test here in LA. If for some reason it didn't work, we were so close to show date that we really didn't have any backup options. It's very difficult to pinpoint very specific problems with specific pieces of content without seeing it live. up there, yeah. live, yeah. ready. Not having the projectors is showstopper, yeah. for right. sure. Like, that's not up for debate. Yeah. Solutions have been found. Right. We did a shoot last night with Duckworth, which was great. It was great, and then we're doing um, we're doing prep today, we're doing three days of work here, and then we have a full shoot day Monday. And I die Tuesday. Yeah. Every time there's wind, the ceiling, the ceiling is actually moving. <laughs> this was one of the largest uses of this technology to date. We had so many unique gags that we were trying with the technology, and we needed to make sure that each one was, was playing exactly the way we expected it to. We were moments away from departure, and all the things that had to get figured out were piling up we still had to shoot the talent on green screen for their holograms. That is so crazy. <laughs> That's like the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's awesome. It's going to be great to really bring it to life. I can't wait to sort of inhabit Camille. This, this is like reality is kicking in in full force right now. You're in it now. <laughs> There's no turning back. Yeah! Beautiful. Beautiful. That's good. You know, this is the most magical stairs I've ever been on.
that's true, okay. Coming down. Like here there's a little more separation, but here there isn't, so. Mm -hmm. In the week before everyone departed for Paris, it was this passionate, frantic rush. What can we do to make this absolutely the best? Because we know it can be. So that we can go And then on the... I, I thought it was okay for it to be the most... It was going to be one enough. meter away. It wasn't one meter away. No. Why are we looking at that stuff? Yeah. I, no, I know, but you're telling me that the other one is twice as much as that? So the front edge is... We weren't even in Paris yet, and we knew that we weren't going to get the final piece of content until the day before the show. So, uh... We arrive in Paris and we have seven days to make everything work perfectly. We knew that we were going to have an extraordinarily tight load in. In 2018, we had over two weeks in the venue. Two days of tech rehearsal and five days of rehearsal. Every minute of delay starts to just remove rehearsal time. Our production team worked a heroic 24-7 schedule to get that show loaded in. It's insane. Everyone is rushing to finish everything. Everything comes back to how much time will we have to get the creative ready for show day. We always wish we have more time. While our main stage is being built, we actually replicated its dimensions in the next room over. That way, our talent and our dancers could get used to their blocking and actually interacting with the holograms. Okay, it's the first time that talent is working with the technology. This was also the first time that our choreographers were getting to work with the local Parisian dancers. It's the first time for a lot of things. <laughs> Seeing the True Damage crew practice the song together for the first time was kind of nerve-wracking. This was a group of artists that come from all over, that speak different languages. We didn't know how well they'd get along, how good their group chemistry would be. It's really important that even in this small amount of time, that they learn how to work together really well. They had to be in sync, and we only had a few days to get them there. We're thinking for today, it would be great to just go in chronological order. So we're kind of going to go in sections. And so the more that we are interacting and we're moving in the same way at times, or at least have moments with the holograms, yeah, that's when like you really zoom out and you're like, oh man, this is like all working together. Crazy, visuals is next level. You know, I can't wait to be up there and see it come to fruition, come to life. You know, I'm excited. It's going to be beautiful, big vibes. I'm very excited too. First First thought. Uh, so we'll see. Ah! <laughs> I guess speechless, because he, he was speechless. <laughs> it's like nothing I've really ever done before, so I'm super happy. I feel like I need to like elevate my own like ah! personal performance now. <laughs> After all that. All these videos. You know, you know right here, all okay. that? I'm like, okay. I guess rapping on the mic ain't enough now. <laughs> all these months and months of planning and the the thing that we envisioned over these last nine months finally comes to life. Every take you get more confident, more comfortable, but uh, I feel excited. How you feel? I feel great, man. Everybody's professional now, you feel me? Everybody coming through, holding that thing down. Everybody got dance moves and stuff. We hit that thing, going crazy. Are you dancing too? Once we get onto the main floor, that's where the chaos really begins. We need to see so many things for the first time. We had a lot of fears because we had a lot of things ongoing on stage. Everything had to go perfect. If one thing went wrong, if a hologram breaks, if somebody misses their cue, if the lighting is off, the whole thing kind of breaks. We needed to see the lighting interact with the holograms. When and how can the hollow come in and out? Will the projectors all work? There was trouble getting the old technology to work with the new technology. We needed to see the trunk open. Turns out that it was more complicated than we expected it to be. There's all of the challenges around broadcast. Do we like the camera angles? There was content being worked on until the very last second. There's three pieces of content we need to check. Three, two, one. I think we're having trouble hitting the marks, and that's really crucial to the show right now. Why does the spotlight come on when I'm already in my, like, two bars in? First mark for a third course. Cool. Is it clear that I'm, like, not all the way over? And then... It's alignment. It's not consensus, right? But... Okay. The magic is showing. I think the toughest part this week has just been getting all the content done um, and making sure that it looks good and is scaled properly and is interacting with the human. 
Valerie sounds great. That's what we want. Oh my gosh. Nerves are running high. Time is running out. <laughs> there are so many things that we want to go right, but we can only push so far. If the hologram breaks, we don't have a solve for that. So we hope that the rest of the elements are able to help carry the show in some way. No, you just gotta keep revising until, until you can't anymore. Until literally they say, stop turning stuff in because the show is already over. We've got to stop. Uh, what we see here is what we're going to get tomorrow. The show must go on. People are super excited. We know today's the day. We can see and hear fans lining up outside of the building, and all of this is for them and their experience and their enjoyment. We're all very anxious. Moms of work are gonna show today, like we know everything needs to work perfectly. There's really no downtime before the show. We are working up until the countdown clock starts. We're all having this underlying stress of, is this actually gonna work? In the moments before the show, there's a hundred different things that are going wrong. They tried to open it, then it didn't open. The trophy case didn't open when we got there in the morning. There were technical issues with it. We didn't know if we were gonna be able to have that be a working element in our show. Everything that could go wrong with Kiana's ring, the morning of the show was going wrong. Projectors? I, let's check, I, yeah. let's not hold doors. The hollow nets were getting unfocused because of the air conditioning in the room. You know, the natural elements of the world. Because they are cleaning the floor and they are super close to the screen right now. No one anywhere near the screen, please. You just have to accept that you're doing as much as you can and whatever will happen will happen. Yeah, we are, mate. Doors are open, pencils down, this is it. Nothing more we can do. Here we go, this is the game. And we're about to watch the last six months of our life's work unfold on a small screen. It's gonna be sick. Get a beat up gin, it's gonna be good. <laughs> One chance. Of course I'm not anxious. At this point, we've been working for 10 months for a 10 minute show. And officially, we have to take our hands off the steering wheel. It's completely out of our control and all there is left to do is watch. thinking about is that first hologram instant. It hits and you hear the crowd's reaction. That was a really, really special moment for us. As much as we'd been telling ourselves, we knew this would work. Now we knew it worked. There's the massive what you mean graphic on the hollow. And as much as I love everything about that performance, nailing that beat in the show was the one that mattered to me more than any other. That was such a highly complex moment of the show. And in rehearsal, we just hadn't gotten it. It was better than we could have ever imagined. At the end of True Damage, there's this momentary feeling of relief. Like, oh, okay, we got, we got through that. And then your brain kicks in and you're like, oh, there's only there's all the Phoenix we got to deal with.
As we're sitting there watching Phoenix, we know that this trophy case moment is coming up, and that's a huge beat in our show. The day had started with the case not opening. You can't unveil a trophy if the box doesn't open. And I remember the Steadicam move starting to circle around the case, and I had two seconds that felt like two hours of panic that it actually wasn't going to happen. You gotta open, you have to open. That was the last big hurdle. The relief and catharsis, because that is effectively the last scary thing. Okay, so 2020 kickoff meeting, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Delivering something like the opening ceremony is, it's so hard to describe the pride you feel. The reaction, it's, it's showing that all those moves are paying off. We worked for so long and everyone finally got to see it. And then immediately kind of sad because it's over. We're gonna go home and get back to work. Let's do it. <laughs> the storm is over. It is now just enjoying a nice world championship. Getting back into our normal routine, things feel a little bit quieter and a little bit slower for a while. We have already begun planning what we're going to be doing for this year's World Ceremony. This is the 10th anniversary of Competitive League of Legends, and we need a ceremony that's going to be as big as that moment should be. I'm really most excited to explore what else is out there and what else we could bring to the show. Engaging on these kinds of big creative questions is the high that we all want to keep chasing. Music is a central force in our shows, and it's something that will stick with players forever. So I think we're going to carry that over into 2020. We're excited about the future and all of the different ways we can make the next opening ceremony incredible. The 2020 ceremony is gonna be awesome.